see from here now. There's <clears throat> a dog parking for me. Today's lesson is born again, a change in the body, but not in the mind. Again, born again, a change in the body, but not in the mind. And sisters and brothers, now that you have the title of today's lesson, we're going to go into our scripture reading. And our scripture reading is going to come from the book of Psalms, chapter 96, verses 1 through 4. Oh, sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Sing unto the Lord. Bless his name, show forth his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the heathen, his wonders among all people. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. Again, our scripture reading came from the book of Psalms, chapter 96, verses 1 through 4. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading hearing and doing of his word in Jesus name we pray amen. amen and so as your host at this time I turn it over to our teacher and our reader today's teacher brother Ray Ben today's reader brother Sajid hey, hey, right, well, thank you thank you brother Ian, for a great and uh, excellent uh, introduction praise the Lord uh, in Jesus name and we would like to say uh Thank the Lord for giving us another opportunity to work in the vineyard in Jesus' name. And uh, like Mother Ed said, today we're going to deal with uh, born again, a change in the body and not in the mind. Because it's taught in the Christian community that when you come into this word, people say they're born again. And uh, But it, it's not in coincide with the Bible. We're going to see what the Bible says about people because this is one subject that has been mistaught. And a lot of people walking around thinking they're born again and they ain't really even turning into the truth. And if you come into the truth, one thing that you will know that you're not born again now. That's why the book called to say uh, born again. And we've been born one time when you came out your mother's womb. But that born again is what we're missing today. We're going to see what the book says about it. So without any further ado, we're going to go and see. The Lord was talking to uh, John, and he told him something because John asked him a question. And let's see what he was. So we're going to start this in St. John, the third chapter, pick it up at verse 1. St. John 3 and 1. But this is where they come and try to show you that when you're born again, but they really not understand it. You've got to take a close look and see what the book says. The Lord said, uh, you know, uh, man don't live by bread alone, but by every word that is seated by the mouth of God that man live. So we're going to look at every word on this born again to see if we get some understanding today. Uh, St. John 3 and 1. Go ahead, brother. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. Uh -huh. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. Uh -huh. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Now, this name is a little bit 
God was with Jesus because couldn't nobody do the things that Jesus was doing. But he was the one that was sent by the Father. But go ahead and read that. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So one time we just found out you've got to be born again, but if you're not, you can't see the kingdom of God. And this is talking about the kingdom of the Father, people. There ain't no way you can get it now unless you're born again, and we're going to show you. But go ahead and read. Nicodemus says unto him, how can a man be born when he is old? Uh -huh. Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Go ahead. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That's right. So when you be born again, you're going to be born of the Spirit. You will be a Spirit. And we're going to show you what you've got to first be born of the water. And the water is what? The Word of God. You got to get that water first, and then you got to be born again and be a spirit being to be in the Father's kingdom. And this is what we're going to show you. But now, continue to read. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that's one thing. You've been born one time. The Lord said, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. You know that you're flesh. I know that I'm flesh. Go ahead and read. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Now, this is what we got to look at. You're born of the spirit. This is when you're going to become a spiritual being. We're going to show you the hype and the potential that God had planned for man. And in order for you to be God, you got to become a spirit being if you're going to live forever. How can you live forever in a flesh and blood body that is corrupted every day since you came out of the womb? The day that you came out of the womb, you start walking down into that corruption. You get old and old. Look around your 20s. Then you look around and you're 50. Now you're 65. But what is everybody doing? It's corrupting. It's going back to the grave, people. So you got to be born again to see God's kingdom, like he said. But what verse? Go ahead. Verse read. 7. Marvel not that I said unto thee, uh, you must be born again. Go ahead. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, uh -huh. and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Now that should be a red flag right there. Everyone that's born again is just like the wind. Mm. Now you know doggone well you ain't like no wind. <laughs> but everyone that's born again is just like the wind. You hear the sound there, but you cannot tell where they're coming or where they're going. So is everyone that's born of the Spirit. We got to look at this thing now. Let's go to St. John 20 now. And see what the Lord told John again. But it's more than so I found out one thing. If you're born again, you just like the wind, people. And uh, hey, if you like the wind, you are some kind of person. You're a spiritual being. We're going to show you. But now, St. John 20, we're going to read 1 and 2, and then we're going to skip. St. John 20 and verses 1 and 2. What did it say, Jerry? The first day of the week comes Mary Magdalene early, uh -huh. when it was yet dark unto the sepulchre, and see if the stone taken away from the sepulchre. That's right. When he came out there, when he died, Jesus was already gone. He rose just before sundown on the Sabbath day. So when they got there on the first day of the week, he was already gone. The stone was rolled away. But let's see what happened. Now, go ahead and read. Then she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter, uh -huh. and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved, and saith unto them, they have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre, uh -huh. and we know not where they have laid him. Yes, sir. And see, one thing I noticed about this, when they come in there to see Jesus, he was dead. But when they came in there to see him, he didn't let him come out of him and go to heaven. Hey, everything, all of him was gone. Wasn't nobody there. All they seen was some gray clothes and towel wrapped at the foot in the top. But Jesus was gone. And this is something that you got to pay attention to. But now, skip down to verse 19 and continue. What did it say? Then the same day of evening, being the first day of the week, uh -huh. when the doors were shut, when the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. Ain't that so? But you notice that the doors and the windows were shut, people. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, Jesus popped in the midst of them and told them, Peace be unto you. Because you know why? He was born again, people. He rose from the grave, but when he came up, he had that spiritual body. And you can come into a room, the doors and the windows can be shut, but you still can come in and be in the midst. 
Ain't that something? Yeah. That's when you born again, people. We gonna show you now. What verse you stop at? That was the end of 19. Keep reading. And when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Uh huh. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. That's when they believed they knew it was the Lord. But skip down to verse 24 and continue. What did he say? But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. Uh huh. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. Go ahead. But he said unto them, Except I shall see his hands in the print of the nails uh -huh. and put my fingers into the print of the nails and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. Ain't that something? He said, Thomas, I ain't going to believe unless I put my hand in his side and in his hands where he can pierce. But while he was talking, something happened. Go ahead and read. And after eight days again, his disciples were within uh -huh. and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut and stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. Hey, so while Tom was talking, the door was shut, boom, Jesus popped up on him. Said, Peace be unto you, man. Tom was shook up because the Lord popped up on him like he did the disciples. But the thing was, it was eight days later. And it's amazing that right now, but that's a lesson for another time. But keep reading. Then says he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, uh -huh. and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand thy hand and thrust it into my side. Go ahead. And be not faithless, but believe it. Go ahead. And Thomas answered and said unto him, my Lord and my God. That's when Thomas knew that he was the Christ. He was the one that died and was in the grave for three days and three nights. But when he put his hand, he said, look here, my Lord and my God. Go ahead and read now. Jesus says unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, Thou hast believed. Uh -huh. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. And that's the way we is. We ain't seen nothing. But we see the word of God and we see that God's prophecy come to pass just like he called it. But we ain't seen, but yet we still believe. Some people, they, they ain't going to believe unless they see something until the Lord returns and roll in heaven. That's when they're going to believe. That's when they'll holler, my Lord, my God. Because the Lord going to show you that's exactly what he is. But keep reading. And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, uh -huh. which are not written in this book. That's right, because they said they had to wrote down everything Jesus did and said while he was in the flesh, that the world could not contain the books. Mm -hmm. So don't get upset talking to them other books. Hey, this King James Version from Genesis to Revelation got everything that you need. But now, let's go to 1 Corinthians 15 now. But we see Jesus was just like the wind. Doors and windows lock people, and if you're born again, this is the way you operate. You can pop up. You got that spiritual body. You just like the wind. You don't you don't know where you're coming from or where you're going, but you know what? It'll blow this whole town down, people. That's the way you is when you're born again. So if you say you're born again, I'm looking at you. You're not born again, people. You've been born one time, but not again. And we gonna show you. But now, first Corinthians 15, and we gonna pick up at verse one. What do you say, brother? Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, uh -huh. which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. Go ahead. By which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. Ain't that something? If you don't remember what the Lord have told you in this word, you have believed in vain. But he told some people going to come and form and say, Lord, Lord, have not we did this in your name, have not we done that in your name. He said, get these from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Because what was they doing? They was worshiping the Lord in vain. For nothing. Because they was doing his they way and not the Lord's way. But go ahead and read. What did he say? For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received. And this is what we're doing. Everything we tell you on this vineyard is something that we received from the Lord as his brother God. And we pass it on to you. And hopefully when you get it, you'll pass it on to some people in there. That's how this thing get around the world. But go ahead and read. How that Christ died for our sins according to the scripture. Go ahead. And that he was buried. And that he rose again the third day according to the scripture. Go ahead and read. And that he was seen of Cephas. Then of the twelve, uh -huh. and that, and that he was seen of above five hundred brethren at once, Go ahead. of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. So the Lord made sure he had many witnesses that he had rose from the grave. But he was in the grave three days and three nights, 
and he had plenty witnesses that he arose. But let's see what happened now. Go ahead. After that, he was seen of James. Then of all the apostles. Uh-huh. And last of all, he was seen of me also. Uh-huh. As one born out of due time. Wait a minute. What do you mean you born out of due time? Because it is a set time for you to be born again, people. You can't be born again now because it is a set time. That's why Paul said, I, hey, this brother looked like he was born out of due time. But he know what time it is when you be born again. It's when that seven trouble is gone. Mm -hmm. This is when you're going to be born again. If you've been so blessed. And then after the, the great right throne judgment, everybody coming there going to be born again because they're going to have that spiritual body. Because you cannot live forever in this flesh and blood body. Even the wicked got to get a spiritual body because they got to be able to burn forever. Yes. This is the thing people don't understand. But now, what did you stop at, brother? That was the end of eight. That was the end of eight? Okay. Now, let's go and take a look at something. Let's go to Mark 16. Mark 16. And see, when you look at the scriptures, people, it'll, it'll remove all darkness away from you. Mm. And you will see the light mm. that the Lord has left in his word for us to see. Mm. Mark 16, you won't be walking around talking about you're born again. <laughs> You'll be saying, I'm trying to get there. And hopefully I'm on the right side. Mm -hmm. uh, Mark 16 and 9, what did it say, brother? Now when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week, uh -huh. he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven devils. Yes, sir, he appeared to her first, but let's see what happened now. Go ahead. And she went and told them that had been with him as they mourned and went. Go ahead. And they, when they had heard that he was alive and had been seen of her, believed not. Hey, they didn't believe what well, they know she had seven devils on her, but Jesus had cast them out. But she told the truth, he is risen. But they didn't believe him. But go ahead and read. After that, he appeared in another form unto two of them as they walked and went into the country. That's right. Now, this is when he appeared as a man. He's walking among these brothers. And he's just trying to see what's on their mind. Let's see what happened now. And they went and told it unto the residue, neither believed they then. Uh -huh. They them. Go ahead. Afterward, he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat. Uh -huh. And upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart. That's what always shut us down, people. That unbelief and that hardness of heart. That you don't want to obey the commandments and you don't want to believe nothing the Lord can say. But then you're talking about you blessed and highly favored. Go ahead and read. Because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. Uh -huh. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And this is what I suppose our job is supposed to be. You're not supposed to be going around and saying that you're born again and you're not. You're supposed to be preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God letting you know the kingdom is coming. And it's a set time for you to be born again and the time is not here yet. But now, Let's go a little further. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 12 chapter. Because Paul made a statement here we need to take a look at, people. But this is that born again. It's a whole other father. Because you know what? You had to be born into the family of man, people. And how do you think you're going to get into the family of God? The only way to get in there, you've got to be born into it. You've got to have a body to be in the family of God. God is taking from the Hebrew word Elohim. One God, but more than one participant. Right now, they number two. But in that first resurrection, it's going to be many. And you know what they're going to be called? God. Yes. The family of God. This is what the Lord is trying to let us see. But 2 Corinthians 12 and verse 1. What do you say now? It is not expedient for me to doubt, doubtless to glory. Uh -huh. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. That's right. You're going to be talking about the Lord. Don't be blowing in yourself, but go ahead and read. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago. Uh -huh. Whether in the body, I cannot tell. Or whether out of the body, I cannot tell. Oh, so was he in the body or was he out of the body? What is he talking about? Was he in the flesh and blood body or was he in the spiritual body? We're going to see it ain't number two kind of bodies, people. Either your flesh or your spirit. It's just that simple. There ain't no... In between. But go ahead and read. God knoweth. Such an one caught up to the third heaven. What? You mean telling me there's three heavens? Mm. And this is what I tell people. Now you say you're going to heaven. Which one are you going to? This is the thing. But it's three heavens. But this Jesus was caught up to the third heaven. Go ahead and read now. And I knew such a man. Whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. You know Paul keeps saying whether he was in the body or out of the body. What is he talking about? 
whether he was a flesh and blood being or was he a spiritual being, he said, I cannot tell. What verse yet? In the three. God knoweth. Okay, that's good enough. But now, let's see what happened. Now, let's go to Acts, the ninth chapter. Paul said he didn't know whether he was out of the body or in the body. Let's see when Jesus came on Paul. Why would he make a statement like that? Let's go look at it. Let's go to Acts, the ninth chapter. We're going to pick it up in verse 1. Because everything is right here in the Word, people. All you got to do is read the book and pray and ask God to give you understanding. Come down to that Israel of God. Keep that Sabbath and get fed this uncut Word of God. And then you'll be blessed, truly blessed. Acts 9 and verse 1, what does it say? And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest. Now this Saul is what Paul's name was before he changed his name. But he said he was breathing out threatenings. Let's see what he was doing now. Go ahead. And desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogue, uh -huh. that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. That's right. Paul said he ain't care whether they were men or women. If he caught you dealing with that true gospel, that good word of God, he was hauling you in so he could be killed or persecuted. This is what Paul was doing. He did damage to the church of God. But go ahead and read. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus. Uh -huh. And suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And just suddenly that light hit Paul. He didn't know what was happening. Go ahead and read. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And then suddenly Jesus come on Saul, which is Paul. Hey, what you press people for? Go ahead, let's see what he said. And he said, Who art thou, Lord? Uh -huh. And the Lord said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. Uh -huh. It is hard for thee to kick against the prince. That's right, and people don't let you know. It's hard to kick against Jesus. You better own yourself. It's hard for you to kick against the prince. But now, skip down to verse 8 and continue. What did that say? And Saul arose from the earth. And when his eyes were open, he saw no man. Uh -huh. But they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. Now, when you keep that in mind, that light shine on Paul so tough he couldn't even see. But then the Lord gave him his vision back. Wait, skip down to verse uh, 18 and continue. What did he say? And immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been skilled. A spag up in some 3 to 17. What did it say? And Ananias went his way and entered into the house uh -huh. and putting his hands on him said brother Saul the Lord even Jesus that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest uh -huh. has sent me that thou mightest receive thy sight see Paul still his eyes were still messed up but we're going to show you something about that go ahead and read and be filled with the Holy Ghost that's right he told me he said he's with the Lord Jesus and visit you Paul so that you can get that Holy Ghost but now let's go a little further he said that he couldn't see and something was wrong with his eyes and really Paul's eyes was messed up from that day to this one, people, until he died. But now, let's take a look at it. Let's see what was wrong with him. Let's go to Galatians, the fourth chapter. Galatians 4. Because when the Lord hit him with that light, Paul's eyes was messed up. Then he went to Ananias, he said, Brother, I'm here to tell you so you're going to see your sight, but it's the Lord that comes with you. Because he wants you to have that Holy Ghost, and he wants all of us to have it, people. And the Holy Ghost is the gift of understanding the Word of God, one form of it. But now, Galatians 4, and we're going to pick it up at verse 14. And pay attention now, see, can't you see it with your spiritual eyes? Galatians 4 and 14, what did it say, brother? And my temptation, which was in my flesh, ye despise not. So Paul said, you didn't despise the temptation that was in his flesh. What temptation? Go ahead. Nor reject it, but receive me as an angel of God, even as Christ Jesus. That's right. So you can be lame in your body and something's wrong with you. But if you're preaching that word of God, he said, look, you receive me like an angel of God. Because he was speaking uncut words. Go ahead and read. Where is then the blessedness ye speak of? Uh-huh. For I bear you record. That if it had not had been possible, you would have plucked out your own eyes and have given them to me. And that so? He said you would have plucked your own eyes because they knew Paul couldn't see, man. And that so? You would have plucked your own eyes. And yes, I know you would have. But the thing was, hey, the Lord, he asked Paul about that. I want you to go back to 2 Corinthians 12 right quick. Paul asked the Lord about that. And look what it, you're going to see what it said now. 
We're going back to that. And we're going to pick it up at uh, seven verse. So this is what Paul is telling these people. That you're not supposed to think of a man more than what he is. But go ahead and read. Unless I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelation. Uh -huh. There was given to me a thorn in the flesh. Go ahead. The messenger of Satan to buffet me. Uh -huh. Unless I should be exalted above measure. Because Paul was so wise and had so much understanding, spoken in many tongues, that the Lord had to put Satan on the buffer, man. Because you'll be puffed up. You'll think you're more than what you asked you had. What was that buffer? It was a lie. He couldn't hardly see. But go ahead and read. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, uh -huh. that it might depart from me. Go ahead. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. Go ahead. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Because sometimes you have weakness, that's when the strength of God gonna come up on you, man. And the Lord knew that. But go ahead and read. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmity. Yes. That the power of Christ may rest upon me. Hey, I might be a little crippled, but hey, if the power of Christ is resting upon me, I'm all good. I can make it. Go ahead and read. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmity. Yes. In reproaches. Yes. In necessity. Uh -huh. In persecution. Yes. In distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. Ain't that something? This one thing you say to God, I got to remember. When you are weak, that's when the Lord going to step in you through weakness. It's my strength made perfect. And that's what he was letting Paul know. But he had that bundle of revelation was on him. But now, let's go and take a look at this thing get back on this board again. Let's go to Daniel 12, chapter 9. But I just want you to see that, that thorn that was on Paul. It was his eyes, man. And certain things in the scripture, he said, this letter here, I have written with my own hand. A lot of times he was dictating that people was writing it down, but Paul was getting straight from the Lord. But hey, it was his eyes, man. And some Lord had to put something on you because he yeah, dropped so know. much spirit on you. So you won't be puffed up and think you're more than what you are. Yeah. Some of us gotta get a little devil full of knowledge and you got to crazy. But now, <laughs> Daniel 12 and verse 1, what did he say now? And at that time shall Michael stand up, uh -huh. the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. Yes, sir. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, uh -huh. even to that same time. What time is this, people? This is great tribulation. Go ahead and read. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, uh -huh. every one that shall be found written in the book. Yes, sir. With the book. Go ahead and read. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, uh -huh. some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. That's right. But when you come out of the grave, and when you live it, you're going to be chained. You're going to be having that spiritual body. That's when you can say, I'm born again. And not a day before. But keep reading. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. What does he let us know something? When you get that spiritual body, what does it do? It shines like the brightness of the firmament. What's the brightest thing in the firmament that man can see? It's the sun. So when you got that spiritual body, that's where that body going to shine. And you walk around here talking about you born again. I, I didn't know you were in the room until you said something. <laughs> because you ain't shining. Because that spiritual body ain't up on you. But he said, read that verse again for me, Brother Fidel. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And what else? And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. That's the way that spiritual body. That's why when Paul, Jesus came on Paul, he shine that light on him, because that's what that spiritual body do. It's, not, it's messed up all, so until he couldn't even see no more. So you know that light is bright. But now, let's go a little further. Let's go to Matthew, the 16th chapter. So remember that. When you got that spiritual body, you're going to shine like the brightness of the furnace. And I, I'm sorry, I don't see nobody walking around here like that. Mark 16, you're going to read the 12. Mark, Matthew. Matthew. 60, I'm sorry. Gotcha. And 24, my fault. And 24. And then we're going to skip down to the 27. Okay, go ahead and read. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. And that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to lay all this foolishness down and take up your cross. When you walk around with a big cross on your neck, no, no. You go through and whatever you have to deal with, dealing with that persecution, your loved ones turn away from you. Don't nobody want to be around you because you got to be trying to serve God and keep his commandments. Ain't that something? Mm -hmm. That's when you're going to put me down you don't want to be around me? Then so be it. I just have to deal with it. I got a friend 
and it's the Lord Jesus Christ, and that's all I need. But now, where you at, brother? That was the end of 24. That was the end of 24. Now skip down to verse 27 and continue. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, mm -hmm. and then he shall reward every man according to his works. Ain't that something? But he's coming with the angels, and he's going to reward every man according to his works. What verse are you? That was the end of 27. Go ahead and read. Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death, till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Mm. Now, this is what the Lord was telling the people that we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Mm. Everybody ain't going to have to die. Some people going to be living when Jesus comes, and they're going to be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. And when? The last stroke. Because that's the time to be born again. But go ahead and read. 17 and 1. Yes. After, and after six days, Jesus taken Peter. James and John, his brother, and bringeth them up into a high mountain apart. Uh -huh. And what happened? And was transfigured before them. That means he went from one thing to another. He came from that flesh to that spirit. And what happened? And his face did shine as the sun. What? And his raiment was white as the light. This is how you look when you're born again, people. Yes, sir. And you know you're not born again because your face ain't shining like the sun. I mean, I don't care how much Vaseline you put on the face. <laughs> But the thing is, he said, look here, <coughs> his face shined like the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. Go ahead and read. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elijah talking with him. Uh -huh. Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. Go ahead. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, uh -huh. one for thee, and one for Moses, and one for Elijah. And see? Peter was doing wrong because he was trying to put that flesh and blood in the Father's kingdom. But the Lord sent him a message. Go ahead. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. Uh -huh. And behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. In other words, get that thing out of your mind of doing what you're going to do or what you're going to say and listen to my Son. He's going to let you know exactly what you're going to do. And he said, hear ye him. But what did that spiritual body do? He transfigured himself before, and his face shined like the sun, and his rain was white as the light, man. Mm -hmm. And this is the way you look when you be born again, people. You got that spiritual body, what does it do? It shines. And we're going to show you, it show no shine. And if you is born again, you ain't got to tell nobody. Everybody's going to know. It's a old boy. Look at how he's shining. Yeah, you'll know it. Right. You see him two or three miles away. Because he got that shine. But now, let's go to first, Second Peter, the first chapter. And this is what Peter was talking about here at this same account when he was up on that mountain with Jesus and Moses and Elijah. Peter. Let's see what he said. First, what did I say? Uh, second Peter, the first chapter. Second Peter, the first chapter. Let's see what he said. We're going to pick it up at verse 16. Second Peter, the first chapter, verse 16. What did he say now? For we have not followed cunningly the vast fable. That's right. We ain't making up nothing and just telling you some people. We got evidence. Go ahead and read. When we made known unto you in the pa the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, uh huh. But were eyewitnesses of His Majesty. We was right there when He transfigured Himself. He was talking about when they was on the mountain. Go ahead and read. For He received from God the Father honor and glory. Uh huh. When there came such a voice to Him from the excellent glory. This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. And then the scripture said, Hear ye him. This was the same time when he was in that mountain. But go ahead and read. And this voice which came from heaven we heard. Yes. When we were with him in the holy mountain. That should have sealed it for you right there. What mountain was he when he took him on that mountain and transfigured himself? His raiment shined as white as the light, and his face was like the sun. He was giving them a vision on how you gonna look in the kingdom. And then brought Moses and Elijah standing next to him. And they had the same kind of body. Ain't that something? Because this is the way that body do get shine. But what verse are you at now? Verse 19. Go ahead and read. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. Uh-huh. Whereunto ye do well that ye take heed. Go ahead. As unto a light that shineth in a dark place. And in this case, that dark place is your mind. This is where that word has got to shine in your mind. Go ahead and read. Until the day dawn. And the day star rise in your heart, uh -huh. knowing this first, 
that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. No, no, go ahead. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, uh -huh. but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. That's how they spoke. The Holy Ghost moved on them, and they wrote it down. That's when you read the Bible, the first thing the prophet say, thus saith the Lord, because they tell you what the Lord said. But now, that's when he transfigured himself. Peter was right there. But now let's go to Luke, the ninth chapter. Luke 9. But that spiritual body we see it more and more. It shines. It's like the stars of heaven, like the sun. It shines. Even your raiment and everything. We're going to show it to you. Luke 9 and 28. Now, Luke 9 and 28. And when you get it for jail, go ahead and read. And it came to pass about, uh, about an eight. And it came to pass about an eight days after these sayings, uh -huh. he took Peter and John and James and went up into a mountain to pray. Go ahead. And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered. Uh -huh. And his raiment was white and glistering. And that's what he said. Now, you say you're born again. I want, I want to see some glistering. I want to see some white stuff all around. Shining like the sun. If you ain't got that people, you ain't born again. You've been born one time. Go ahead and read. And behold. There talked with him two men, uh -huh. which were Moses and Elijah, Go ahead. who appeared in glory and spake of his decease, which he should accomplish at Jerusalem. Uh -huh. But Peter and they that were with him were heavy with sleep. Go ahead. And when they were awake, they saw his glory and the two men that stood with him. Which was Moses and Elijah. Go ahead. And it came to pass, as they departed from him, Peter said unto Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Uh -huh. And let us make three tabernacles, one for thee and one for Moses and one for Elijah, not knowing what he said. He know what he said. He's trying to put that flesh in the Father's kingdom. But go ahead and read. While he thus spake, there came a cloud and overshadowed them. And they feared as they entered into the cloud. Yes, sir, you fear too. That cloud has come down on you and get you. You can't see nobody, you be shook up. You don't know what's going to happen. But go ahead and read. And there came a voice out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved son. Hear him. Hear him. And that's what we got to do. But now, let's go to Revelation 3rd chapter right quick. Because he said his raiment was white. And when you get that white raiment, people, this is when you got it made. This is when you've been blessed. You can say, Hey, I'm blessed and highly favored. And you know what? I'm born again. <laughs> Revelation 3 and 5. What does it say, brother? He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. Uh huh. And I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. And if you got that white raiment on, the Lord doesn't change you. You got that spiritual body. But now, skip down to verse 18. What did it say? I counsel thee to buy me gold tried in the fire. Uh huh. That thou mayest be rich. Yes, sir. And white raiment. That thou mayest be clothed, uh -huh. and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. See, some people think they clothed, but they ain't keeping the commandments. They naked as a jaybird. <laughs> when you ain't got the commandments, you are butt naked before the Lord. You ain't got no protection. Go ahead and read. And anoint thine eyes with thy salve, uh -huh. that thou mayest see. So we can see that we ain't born again now, because the time to be born again ain't changed. Revelation four and four. What did it say? And round about the throne were four and twenty seats. Uh -huh. And upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting. What was it clothed in? Clothed in white raiment. Uh -huh. And they had on their heads crowns of gold. Now when you get your crown, people, the same time you get your white raiment, this is when you're born again, you got that spiritual body not a day before. That's why the Lord said you don't let no man take your crown. But now, go to Revelation 9 and 8. What did it say? And they had hair as the hair of women. Uh-huh. And their teeth were as the teeth of lion. So hey. And they had breastplates as it were breast breastplates of iron. Uh-huh. And the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. Go ahead. And they had tails like, like unto scorpions. Uh-huh. And there were stings in their tail. But you know I'm in the wrong place. I wanted to be in that 19 and 8. That's where I wanted to be. Forgive me, my fault. Yeah. I'm sorry. 19 and 8. Go ahead, Brother McGill. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, uh -huh. clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. That's what the right, that's what the God is. The righteousness of the saints, people. And once you got that, and you got that crown, you got that spiritual body, people. 
And then you can see the kingdom of God, which is the Father's kingdom. It's going to be flesh and blood in Jesus' kingdom for a thousand years because he's coming to clean this earth up and get it straight for the Father to come. But when the Father's kingdom comes, there ain't going to be no flesh and blood in that kingdom. That's a spiritual kingdom. And everybody in this got to have that spiritual body. But now, let's go a little further. Let's go to Exodus 34. But that body is always shining ever since you've seen it. Lord, let you peek at it every now and then through the scripture. But the thing is, you're not going to be able to get it until you born again. Exodus 34. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1 and 2. Then we're going to do some skipping. Exodus 34. And we're going to read 1 and 2 and do some skipping. But yeah, okay, go ahead. And the Lord said unto Moses, Use thee two tables of stone like unto the first. Uh -huh. And I will write upon these tables the words that were in the first tables which thou breakest. Right, this is the second time Moses had to go up to the mountain and get these two commands because he broke the first one. But go ahead and read. And be ready in the morning. Uh -huh. And come up in the morning unto Mount Sinai. Go ahead. And present thyself there to me in the top of the mountain. Yes, sir. He said, present yourself to me, Moses. But skip down to verse 4 and continue. And he used two tables of stone like unto the first. Uh -huh. And Moses rode up, rose up early in the morning. Go ahead. And went up unto Mount Sinai as the Lord had commanded him. Uh -huh. And took in his hand the two tables of stone. He took in his hand two tables. Go ahead and read. And the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. Yes, sir. And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord God, merciful uh -huh. and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth. Because the Lord made a proclamation when he come on the scene. He's a great God and he's laying out his carriage and showing you how he is. Long-suffering, merciful, full of grace and truth. And he just went in the whole presbytery down to him. But now, skip down to the verse uh, 8 and continue. What did it say? And Moses made haste and bowed his head toward the earth and worshiped. Hey, Moses saw the Lord, man. That was a big thing. He looking at him. But go ahead and read. And he said, if now I have found grace in thy sight, O Lord, uh -huh. let my Lord, I pray thee, go among us. Ain't that something? For it is a stiff-necked people. Oh. And, and pardon our iniquity and our sin and take us for thine inheritance. I wonder who is this stiff-necked people that he's talking about. <laughs> but now, skip down to verse 28 and continue. What did it say? And he was there with the Lord 40 days and 40 nights. Uh -huh. He did neither eat bread nor drink water. And he wrote upon the tables the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. Oh, that's what the covenant is, the Ten Commandments? Yes. So now, this is the second time he's up there. He was right there with the Lord. He fast. He wasn't eating nothing or drinking nothing. Let's see what happened now. And it came to pass, when Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tables of testimony in Moses' hand, uh -huh. when he came down from the mount, that Moses was not that the skin of his face shone. While he talked with him. And that's up. He's up with the Lord just 40 days. And he started taking on that appearance of that spiritual body. His face was shining. And he didn't even know it. But go ahead and read. And when Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face shone. Uh -huh. And they were afraid to come nigh him. And they seen Moses shine. Hey, everybody took off running. But Moses said, what's wrong? He didn't know his face was shining, but just from being around the Lord's presence for 40 days. And see, they talk about Enoch. Enoch walked with the Lord for 300 years. I wonder how he was, he was shining. If Moses shined like that just for 40 days, how was Enoch shining after 300 years? Because that spiritual body would do it, do it, shine. But keep reading. And Moses called unto them. And Aaron and all the rulers of the congregation returned unto him. Uh -huh. And Moses talked with them. Go ahead. And afterward, all the children of Israel came back. Hey, once they said it was cool and they were talking to him, then they came on back. But go ahead and read. And he gave them in commandment all that the Lord had spoken with him in Mount Sinai. Uh huh. Until Moses had done speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. Ain't that something he had shined that much? He had to put a veil on his face when he talked to the people? Go ahead. But when Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he took the veil off. That little shy Moses had the Lord. That didn't mean nothing to the Lord. But to the people, he, he had to cover his face up. Go ahead and read. Until he came out. Uh -huh. And he came out. 
and speak unto the children of Israel that which he was commanded. Go ahead and read. And the children of Israel saw the face of Moses, uh -huh. that the skin of Moses' his face shone. Go ahead. And Moses put the veil upon his face again until he went in to speak with him. Ain't that something? So every time he talks to the people, he had to put the veil on. But when he talked to the Lord, he took it off. But what happened? Just being around the Lord 40 days, his face started to shine because he started taking on that spiritual body. The, the appearance of it, his face was shining, just like the sun, like the book said. But now, let's go to Matthew 13 now. That's why I know you ain't born again, people. Because I don't see no shine. I don't see your clothes glistening and white. Because the, that is the, 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 the white garments is the righteousness of the saints, the book said. Matthew 13 and 36, what did it say? Then Jesus sent the multitude away uh -huh. and went into the house and his disciples came unto him saying, Declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. Go ahead. He answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the son of man. Yes, sir. The field is the world. Yes. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. That's what we want to be. Go ahead. But the tares are the children of the wicked one. Oh, Lord. No. Go ahead. The enemy that sold them is the devil. Yes. The harvest is the end of the world. And that's still upon us, people. We at the end of the world. This is the harvest. What the Feast of Tabernacles was all about. Go ahead and read. And the reapers are the angels. Yes, sir. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, uh -huh. so shall it be in the end of this world. That's right. The tares will have this thing in the body, but they're going to throw them right in that fire. Where you can burn forever. Worms is eating on it. You're weeping and gnashing your teeth, but you're not burned up. You're going to be like that forever, people. That's why we consider what you do. Have a care. What you doing, people? Because there's a great wicked thing that come along with that wicked. But now, continue. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, uh -huh. and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity. Go ahead. And shall cast them into a furnace of fire. Uh -huh. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. That's what we all want to go there, people. What you got to have a spend your money to be in there. But go ahead, pay attention. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. All the righteous going to shine forth like what? The sun in the kingdom. That's the way that spiritual body look. It shines just like the brightness of the firmament. Go ahead and read. Who has ears to hear, let him hear. Hear this, people. When you hear this, you will stop saying that you're born again now. Let's go to Philippians, the third chapter, because the Lord got to do something to us now. When he comes in order for us to live the ever and be with the Lord, we can't stay in this flesh and blood body. Hey, when you get to be about 60 years old, you're on your way out of here. Mm -hmm. And you told me you're going to live forever? You've got to be born again. It makes so much sense to me. Philippians 2 and 3, three and 21. 3 and 21. Yes. Go ahead. Who shall change our vow body? that it may be fashioned like unto his glory body, glorious body. So what kind of body do we got now, people? This body is vile. I don't know how much money you put on, how much room. You're vile. And if we want to be lived forever in God's kingdom, he got to change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body where it's going to shine and live forever and be God. Did you finish that? No. Read it. According to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Because the Lord gave man great potential. He had great plans for man. He still got it. But man ain't tapping into it because he's wrapped up in his own foolishness. Sometimes when you're in your own foolishness, you can't see nothing. Numbers 23, and we're going to read this 19th verse. So the Lord tells you what he is. With his own mouth, by the mouth of these prophets. Numbers Numbers 23 and 19, what did he say? God is not a man. That's right. That he should lie. Uh-huh. Neither is the son of man that he should repent. So God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Hey, well, what is it here? We're going to find out what he is. But now, let's go to Psalms 82. Let's find out what our purpose was. What did the Lord choose us for, people? And what is he doing all of this obeying himself and Trying to get us to turn to him. Why? What is it for? 
Psalms 82 and verse 1. When you get to go ahead, we're going to read 1 and 2 and skip to 6 and 7. Okay, go ahead. God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. Uh huh. He judges among the gods. He judges among the gods. Who is these gods? He judges among. Right now, they number two in the God. Yeah, but who is these gods? He judges among. What does that second verse say? How long will you judge unjustly uh -huh. and accept the persons of the wicked? He talking to me and people. So your potential, our potential is what to be God. And for all of you to be God, you got to have that spiritual body to live forever and be like God. But look what he say. Now skip down to verse uh, 6 and 7. What did it say? I have said, ye are God. Wait a minute. He told you that twice. This is what he means. But this is sometimes it's too big for me to understand it. You mean I got a chance to become God? Yes. But don't blow it. Go ahead and read. And all of you are children of the Most High. Uh huh. But what's gonna happen? But ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princes because we disobeyed the word. But Jesus said, "I said ye are God." But let's go confirm that. Let's go to Saint John the tenth chapter now. But Jesus saying, "You gotta know, people. Then if you don't understand this, you won't be said, I'm not born again, and neither is you. <laughs> but we got a chance to get it though." If we do it the way the Lord say. St. John 10 and 24, what did it say, brother? Then came the Jews round about him uh -huh. and said unto him, How long does thou make us to doubt? Go ahead. If, if thou be the Christ, tell us plain. Uh -huh. Jesus answered them, I told you, and ye believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. Yes, sir. What verse? Verse 26. Let's skip down to verse 30 and continue. What did it say? I and my father are one. Uh huh. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Now they get ready to stone him because he said he's one with the father. Go ahead and read. Jesus answered them, Many good works have I showed you from my father. For which of those works do ye stone me? Uh huh. The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we stone thee not. Go ahead. But for blasphemy. And because that thou, being a man, makest thyself God. Uh-huh. So they were going to hurt Jesus because he said that. But look what Jesus threw on. Go ahead. Jesus answered them. Is it not written in your law? I said ye are gods. What? He told you. I told you he was God. You get ready to stone me because I said I'm a son of God. Hey, this is what your potential. He said, I told you. So who was that talking to his son? He said, I told you. That's right. But you still ain't getting the message. Go ahead and read. If he called them gods unto whom the word of God came, uh -huh. and the scripture cannot be broken, Go ahead. say ye of him whom the Father had sanctified and sent into the world, thou blasphemous, because I said I am the son of God. Ain't that so? But this is our potential, people. This is what you got to become. And in order for you to be God, you got to get that spiritual body. You got to shine like the brightness of the thunder and like the stars forever and ever. That's the way that spiritual body looks. But now, let's go to uh, Galatians, the fourth chapter. Galatians, fourth chapter. And we're going to pick it up. We're going to read three to the seven. Galatians, four, three to the seven. What did it say? Even so, even so, we. When we were children, we're in bondage under the elements of the world. Yes, sir. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law. That's right. He was made of a woman because he was born of a virgin. But go ahead and read. To, re to redeem them that were under the law. Uh-huh. That he might receive the adoption of son. That we might receive the adoption of some. And if you receive adoption, that means you're coming from one family and going to another. In order for you to get in there, when you get in there, the first thing they're going to do is change your name and give you they none. But you got to be adopted out of the family of man to get into the family of God, people. you got to receive the adoption. But go ahead and read. And because ye are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts. Uh-huh. Crying, Abba, Father. Go ahead. Wherefore thou art no more servant, but a son. Uh-huh. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. That's right. If you're an heir of God, everything God got, he going to give you you because you are you an heir of God. Mm -hmm. This is what we throw on the way. We messing around, walking around here talking about we born again. Let's go to Romans the 8th chapter. 
but this bad teaching. I ain't blaming the people. It's these false prophets that's killing the people, selling them things that they ain't, and we ain't doing no reading ourselves. If you read the book, you would see, you know what? I ain't even born again. Mm -hmm. He said, well, Lord, it's blessing you with some understanding. Mm -hmm. Romans 8 and 14, now, what does it say? For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Oh, and what spirit is this that's leading you? It is the word of God. As long as you walk in that word, you're a type of son. But you won't be a full son of God until a time upon it, until you be born again. Keep reading. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to uh, fear. Go ahead. But ye have received the spirit of adoption. That's right. Whereby we cry, Abba, Father. That's right. So you got to be adopted out of the family of man into the family of God. Then you can call on the Father. But go ahead and read. The Spirit itself bear witness with our spirit uh -huh. that we are the children of God. That's who he is if you live by the Spirit of God, which is his word. Go ahead and read. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. Uh -huh. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. Because we got to do a little suffering in this life, in this world. But if we do that, and then we going to be partakers of the glory. And you will have that spiritual body. You will be God like he promised you. He said, I say ye are God. But now, let's go and see another reason why you're going to get changed. We're looking for those that are living. They're going to be changed when the Lord returns. But then you got some people in the grave. Let's see what he said about them. St. John 14. Job 14, I mean. Job 14. And we're going to pick it up at verse 10. Job 14 and 10, when you get it, brother, go ahead and read, so time is running out. But we're doing good, we're doing good. Job 14 and 10, what did it say? But man dieth and wasteth away. Yea, man giveth up the ghost, and where is he? Where is he at? See, some people think, I can do dirt, I can do evil, and then when I die, I'm gone anyway. But no, no, we're going to wake you up, you're going to pay for everything you did while you was here on this earth. Right. Go ahead and read. As the waters fell from the sea, uh -huh. and the flood decayeth and dryeth up. Go ahead. So man lieth down, and riseth not, till the heavens be no more. Uh -huh. They shall not awake, nor be raised out of their sleep. Also, oh, long as you see the heaven, then you know the dead is still in the ground. They shall not awake until the heavens be no more. Go ahead and read. Oh, that thou wouldest hide me in the grave. But no, maybe take me to heaven instead. Let me be right by your side. He didn't say that, though. Go ahead and read. That thou wouldest keep me secret Go ahead. until thy wrath be past. And what wrath is that? That great tribulation. Go ahead and read. That thou wouldest appoint me a set time. And do what? And remember me. That's what we want if we go down to the grave. But if you live it, you want him to remember you too. But go ahead and read. If a man die. Shall he live again? Yes, sir. All the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change come. What change? From being changed from flesh to that spiritual body. I'm going to wait till my change come. But go ahead and read that next verse. What did he say? Thou shalt call, and I will answer thee. Uh-huh. Thou will have a desire to the work of thine hand. You mean tell them I'm going to be laying in the grave and the Lord is going to call and I'm going to answer him? Is that what we read? Yes. Let's go and look at that. Let's go to St. John 5, people. Because it ain't nothing in the old book that ain't in the new book, people. That's where they're getting the information from. St. John 5 and 25 this time. When you get it, go ahead and read. Verily, verily, I say unto you, uh -huh. the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, uh -huh. and they that hear shall live. Now these are the living that spiritually dead. It's going to time gonna come and they gonna hear this word and they gonna live. Go ahead and read. For as the Father has life in Himself, uh -huh. so has He given to the Son to have life in in Himself. Go ahead and has given Him authority to execute judgment also, because He is the Son of Man. And that's the one that's gonna be doing the judgment, the Son of Man. But go ahead and read. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming. In the which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice. Oh, now we done got down to what Job was talking about. All that's in the grave going to hear his voice. Job said he's going to call and I'm going to answer him. Go ahead and read. And shall come forth. Uh-huh. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life. Yes, sir. That means you in the God's kingdom. You got that spirit about it. It's beautiful. Go ahead. And they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. Oh, and that's where you don't want to go, people. 
But you got to have a spiritual body to go there. But let's look at this thing real close. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 10. We could have went here at first and solved this whole thing. But we went around the long way so you'll never forget it. You'll never be out there saying, I'm born again. And if somebody stands next to you saying that, you tell them, no, you ain't born again. Neither am I. First Corinthians 15 and 35. 15. First Corinthians 15 and 35. What did it say, brother? But some man will say, how are the, how are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? It's a great question. Go ahead. Thou fool, that which thou sowest is not quickened except it die. That's right. It ain't going to be brought to life until it dies. Go ahead and read. And that which thou sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be, uh -huh. but bear grain. It may chance of wheat or of some other grain. Uh -huh. But God giveth it a body as it hath pleased him. That's right. When you put a piece of corn in the ground, people, that ain't the body that shall be. You put it in the ground, and when it grows up, it's got that glorified body. A stalking four, five ears of corn on it. This is that glorified body from the corn. But same way you go in the flesh and blood body, but when the Lord raised you up, you're going to be raised up with power with that spiritual body mm -hmm. and can't die no more and be as God. Go ahead and read. And to every seed his own body. Yes, sir. All flesh is not the same flesh. No, it ain't. But there is one kind of flesh of men, uh -huh. another flesh of beasts, Go ahead. another of fishes, and another of birds. And how how it, many bodies is it? There are also celestial bodies. Celestial is what? Heavenly. Go ahead. And bodies terrestrial. Terrestrial is earthly body. Now, you remember that boy E.T.? That was extra. He was some extra flesh running around there. But the thing <laughs> was, terrestrial is earthly, celestial is heavenly. So only two kinds of bodies. Yes, You've been born once with this flesh and blood body, but when you be born again, you'll have a spiritual body until that happens, people. You are not, why they think you call it? Born again. Mm -hmm. You ain't got it yet. But now, skip down to verse 42 and continue. So also is the res resurrection of the dead. Uh -huh. It is sown in corruption. That's what kind of body you got now, a corruptible body. Go ahead. It is raised in incorruption. Uh -huh. It is sown in dishonor. Go ahead. It is raised in glory. Go ahead. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. Ain't that something? Because you got that spiritual body. You are God, and you got that spiritual body, and you shine just like the sun, and you got that power. That's like when Jesus came out of the grave, he said, all power was given unto me in heaven and in earth. And you are joined there with Christ. You're supposed to have had everything he getting. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. It is sown a natural body. Uh -huh. It is raised a spiritual body. Go ahead. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. Uh -huh. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. Uh, he didn't put no soul in. He was made a living soul. You are the soul. Go ahead and read. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. That was Jesus, and he was made a quickening spirit because the Lord is showing you true creation. Creation of man and the creation of God. But now, let's go to Colossians, the first chapter. Colossians, the first chapter. We're going to pick it up at verse 12. Colossians 1 and 12. And when you get it, Go ahead and read it, brother. Giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in life. Ain't that something you'll be inheriting what Jesus got, what he got from the Father, and he gonna get, make you an inheritance. Go ahead. Who have delivered us from the power of darkness. Yes, sir. And has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. You gotta be translated like Jesus was from that flesh and blood body to that spiritual body. But go ahead and read. In whom we have redemption through his blood. Yes, sir. Even the forgiveness of sins. Uh-huh. Who is the image of the invisible God. Yes. The firstborn of every creature. Oh, he's the firstborn from every creature. So he's the firstborn that's insinuating that some more people is coming. But go ahead and read that verse again. What did it say? Who is the image of the invisible God. Uh-huh. The firstborn of every creature. Go ahead. For by him were all things created. Go ahead. That are in heaven and that are in earth. Uh-huh. Visible and invisible. Whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. And you better know it, people. All things. But skip down to verse 17. You're going to read 17 and 18. What did it say? And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Yes. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, 
the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. But he is the firstborn from the dead, the book says. Because it's many more that's coming. But now let's go to the last scripture. Let's go to Hebrews 12 chapter. And we got to know this here. This is why we got to be changed, people. Hebrews 12, we're going to pick it up at verse 6. Hebrews 12 and 6. Hebrews 12 mm -hmm. and 6. And when you get it, brother, go ahead and read. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. Yes. And scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. So if you ain't get no chest out, you better watch yourself. Something's done with wrong. And when the Lord will be up and take you some changes, praise God, because he chests out you. And that's when you do your tune. Because, hey, you spoil, remove the rod, you spoil the child. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. So if you hold on and go through the thing the Lord got you going through, he's dealing with you like a son. He's correcting you. He's healing you. He's working on you. Go ahead. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? We don't know, no. He just said even Jesus had to be chastened. He said he learned obedience to the things which he suffered. But go ahead and read. But if ye be without chastisement, well, all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. Because the Lord got to shape and beat you down and get you into that mold of God. Got to get that foolishness out of our mind. But keep reading. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, uh -huh. and we gave them reverence. Yeah, we did. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the father of spirits and live? He's the father of what? Spirits. So if he's the father of spirits, then what do you have to be if he is your father? You got to have that spiritual body. You got to be born again, people. And until the Lord comes and set the trumpet blown, we still wait for the manifestation of the Son of God. I thank you for your time, and I hope somebody learned something from what I tried to bring. And uh, may the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'm going to turn it back over to the host. Yes. I'd like to thank brothers working in the vineyard for another great lesson. And uh, brothers and sisters, some of you all have inquired about the different programs that are available at the Israel of God. Uh, we encourage you to go directly to the web address. That's www.theisraelofgod.com. And also, sisters and brothers, some of you all, uh, well, not, not that, but uh, the other thing is the one thing that's throughout each and every one of these lessons is that in order for you to receive salvation, you must keep God's Ten Commandments. There is absolutely no other way for you to receive salvation. So with that being said, sisters and brothers, I just simply want to thank you on behalf of brothers working in the day yard for tuning in with us yet again on a Thursday at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time via Facebook and YouTube. And as always, sisters and brothers, we do look forward to seeing you. So until that next time we get together, peace to you all in the mighty and precious name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, guys, let's stand and we're going to close out and face Jerusalem. Oh, great God, the great God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, whose name is Jesus. Father, bless this lesson. Send it far as it could go and let the people know that you have to be born again to enter into God's kingdom. And Father, we ask you to bless this physical food that we have set before you this day. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.